If you are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Coming up on the program, we're going to take a look at our large garden, the good and the bad. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored by the following. MIGardener.com with over 450 varieties of non-GMO, heirloom, organic, flowers, vegetables, and herb seeds, all for 99 cents. MIGardener.com. HappyLeafLED.com, a commercial grade grow light with a home gardener's affordability. All indoors, no fans, no motors, simply plug in and grow. Great for seed starting to lettuce to full grown tomatoes. HappyLeafLED.com. Sustain Natural Fertilizer, offering superior organic plant foods that deliver research proven results. Trusted by farmers, growers, and gardeners for 30 years. Learn more at sustain.com. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. The large garden is full. There's a lot of good things that are going on and there's some things that are not so good. I'm going to show you everything that we got happening here and maybe it'll help you in your particular growing area. Our large garden is about 1,800 square feet. And on the high end here is the hottest portion. We've got a maple tree that shades the garden part of the day, which actually is a benefit to some of the vegetables we have growing. Doesn't hurt them, but a couple hours of, of shade is not bad. In the front yard, we do have our raised bed of onions, looking very nice. Here is, we used to have 150 square foot of strawberries. And, Progressively, they have worked their June bearing, so they put daughter plants on. They've worked their way this way. And the bed is seven years old. They were declining, and some of them just weren't coming back. That's usually the lifespan of some of these strawberries. So what we did was we mowed out a path, and we put squash up along this fence. There's some bananas, uh, uh, pumpkins, uh, some meaty, meteor uh, squash up there, and then I got zucchini and some scallop squashes down here. So we're going to utilize that. i got to come in here and kind of clean the weeds out a little bit and then mow, uh, mow another path and maybe plant some more later ones. Now we do have milkweed that is coming up in here. I'm going to avoid mowing that over because that is a, a uh, birthing place for the monarch butterfly. They'll lay their larva, they'll feed off that and then they'll morph into the, the butterfly. So I'm not going to disturb that. I'll work around that. And this bed of strawberries is pretty much done. Two years ago we got 16, 15 pounds off the bed. Last year we got eight pounds. This year we got a mere maybe one and a half pounds off of it. So the bed's pretty much done. And for what we can uh, pick at a pick your own farm, the advantage is to turn this and convert this back into a regular annual bed instead of a perennial bed. With our fences here we planted our jicama. They didn't take off very good, but they are coming back. We're, this is an experimental process. We'll see how well they do as the days get shorter here and later in the fall. That's when the roots or the tuber develop. So we'll play around with that and see how that works. We have a, some mid potatoes. These are planted later in the season, not at the normal time, about four weeks later Here than is normal. our first of several tomato beds uh, of all different sizes. We had if you followed us on a regular basis, we had a lot of problems with plant starts because of bad uh, potting mix, starter mix this year. We were able to save with manure tea uh, the tomatoes and some of the peppers. We do have uh, bird feeders in amongst the tomatoes as well as the garden in order to bring birds in for them to eat the bad insects. Uh, this was a volunteer sunflower that was growing over uh, next to the house we brought over. It has uh, germinated quite well. And the, tomato, and the tomatoes are in multiple different stages and sizes, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Here is our fall garlic. The garlic is getting ready to harvest as the lower leaves are beginning to die. The top leaves are also dying back. It's an indication that we are right at the time that we need to harvest it. So here is the not so good portion of the garden. We've got two beds here, one of eggplants. We've got two eggplants that we start, uh, got from starts and then the rest we planted uh, from starts that we had that we started from seed because of that bad potting soil they did not get a good start we tried to save them some of them will come uh, and, and, and grow and be fine it's just going to take a much longer process here's another bed of peppers that are, were very very uh, poor in germination because of the bad soil potting mix you can see they're very small I think they will come if they don't, it's not that big of a deal. We're not heavy consumers of peppers. We can buy a good amount at the farmer's market for uh, very little money. Uh, and we do have a volunteer tomatoes here. And on this side here, we have tomatoes that I've planted. This was um, parsnips and parsley rooted uh, that didn't come up. 
I do have one parsley root uh, right there. Uh, so we'll, we'll uh, work with that and if something doesn't grow very good, we replace it instead of trying to nurse it along. So with the tomato, with the uh, peppers and the eggplants, I'm going to leave them alone and just see if we can make that work, uh, especially the eggplants. Uh, and it may just be one of them years where we just have a crop failure. That's sometimes all there is to it. Now, if we had good plant starts, as we normally do, this wouldn't be an issue. Next to this is our Jerusalem artichoke bed. Oh, back here we have spring garlic. We planted this very early in the spring. It got several cold cycles on it, very cold freezes. I do have some scapes on here uh, that I'm going to have to harvest. But uh, the reason why you need the cold cycles on the spring garlic is otherwise it won't divide properly. That's why we always... Most times people will plant garlic in late fall to get that established root system and it'll go in dormancy over winter and then it'll germinate. It'll have enough, or uh, it'll sprout up. It'll have enough cold hours on the tuber, uh, the clove or the bulb, the bulb itself. Here is our Jerusalem artichoke bed. This is a perennial bed. It comes back year after year. Uh, a typical artichoke, Jerusalem artichoke plant will produce between three and five pounds of tubers. This is not related to the globe artichoke that you might be familiar with. We've got our bush beans here. We've got our cucumbers uh, on the trellis here. Over in front of the Jerusalem artichokes, we've got a root maker raised bed. We've got beans that are doing very good that are producing as well as we've got beets. Here's another batch of tomatoes there. We've got some more fall garlic that is ready, uh, getting close to harvest. As well as on this side here, we've got a bird feeder. And in the bird feed that we're using, it does have sunflower seeds. So we're getting natural sunflowers to germinate because the birds kick out a certain amount of that during the eating process. And we have leeks back here that we uh, got from starts. Our potatoes here are the tallest potatoes we've ever grown. Now, this is not necessarily because we had a tremendous amount of nitrogen in the soil because we haven't, we didn't really put any additional nitrogen. We did use the sustained fertilizer in it and some of the soil building uh, prop, uh, um, products that they had. But these are waist high. I've never had them this big. So they haven't flowered yet. So hopefully they will return as being tall in the aspect of a good yield underground. We've got our another batch of tomatoes here in various different sizes. This is our yacon bed. We've got 20 yacons here. That's a root crop from South America. We've been growing since I believe it was 2014. We save the rhizomes each year and we're able to propagate new growth on it. Back here is a, the first or early potatoes that we have. Again, they have not flowered yet. We have in this bed here, we've got okra kale and brussels sprouts that are doing very very well uh, in the production state here do have some uh, butterflies in here that we'll have to deal with that are uh, going to lay eggs and cause problems but we'll deal with that as it uh, occurs here is another bed of tomatoes 15 uh, three rows of five doing very very well and we continue to trim the bottom of the tomatoes as needed to keep that six to eight inches from soil to uh, up the stalk to keep that air circulation and prevent soils from slashing up. These are very nice cabbage, cabbages we have growing here as well. These two beds fall in the category of not so good. We've got ground cherries in this bed and some volunteer squash. Again, these ground cherries we started. And then this bed is a mosh podge of ground cherries, peppers, and tomatoes just to fill the bed out. We're dealing with thistles as well. Uh, again, they were very, very small seedlings. So we're going to have to uh, just see what happens and uh, allow the volunteer squash that's right in front of you uh, to grow and see what comes of that. I believe that is going to be a spaghetti squash, but we'll let that go and uh, if we can get a free harvest off that, we certainly will. We haven't forgot about the containers. We've got tomatoes, eggplant, and yacons growing in the, uh, the root maker grow bags and molded uh, planters there, as well as in the compost pile. We have a very nice uh, zucchini plant volunteer coming in the, in the compost pile so we'll let that grow to fruition as well as the hottest portion of the garden is behind the garage here where we have okra planted. Okra likes a very hot moist uh, if possible area so we're going to see how they do there. Uh, the last three beds in the garden here we have pole beans uh, which is getting kind of competing with the thistles that will work on thinning out or getting rid of the thistles. We've already got some pole beans 
climbing up on the strings here. This is going to be a Florida weave tomato bed. We've got 21 tomatoes there and another bird feeder and we have some volunteer sunflowers coming up there. And our final bed is bush beans and kohlrabi that we got from Starts. So you can get kohlrabi from Starts and they do very, very well. So this is just how our garden, the large garden here, looks. There, it can be a variety of different things that uh, make a garden good and make a garden bad. You've seen are good and are not so good. So hopefully your garden is growing better than ours. Uh, thanks for joining us. Join us again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.